Okay. We're going to perform Craig's test, but first want to demonstrate on the skeletal system, then we'll go over and do it on the human body. With antiversion, what is taking place is we're looking at the, the relationship of the femoral head in with its relationship to the distal femur. So with antiversion, what takes place is the femoral head literally rotates more anteriorly uh, with relationship to this femur, and there is this torsion and twisting. With retroversion, the, the uh, head of the femur is more in a posterior direction. So with Craig's test, what we're doing is we're going to take the patient, lay him in prone, we're going to position the knee up at 90 degrees, and I'm going to palpate and rotate, externally, internally rotate, so I find that the most lateral or most uh, lateral position of the greater trochanter is being palpated. From this position, when I find that it's most lateral, I know I have the femur in its most neutral position, I come down and I'm going to take a measurement through the tibia versus the lateral side of the table. So when I do that, I'm, look, I'm getting a goniometer in a position that's going to be most parallel to the table and I'm measuring the tibia through that position. And the angle between 8 and 15 degrees would be considered antiversion. Anywhere from 8 to 15 degrees would be considered an antiversion of the hip. So now we're going to show you on the actual person. Patient's in prone. I'm going to take his knee up into flexion. From this position, I just lay my hand laterally onto the side of the hip so I find the greater trochanter. Very easily found just by rotating externally and internally rotating at the, at the uh, hip. So when I find the most protruding or most lateral position of his hip, that's my position of measurement. From this position, I hold right there. I get my goniometer into position, put it on the zero line, and my stationary handle is going to be parallel with the table, and my moving arm is going to be with the tibia. It goes right through the tibial tuberosity. So in this patient's uh, situation, he's at 6 degrees. So he does not have a problem with antiversion. An antiverted hip might look at about 15 degrees or greater than 8, might look more like this to be antiverted, where the hip is being pushed a little bit more into internal rotation. Again, it's the relationship between the distal femur condyles and how the torsion takes place at the proximal femur.